and brokers. Wow, that is absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah. Serves Britain's elite. I'd like a double brandy and a big fat cigar. Here, asset rich. Get that. But cash poor clients. Ideally, I would like to get to 100,000. Exchange their possessions. Love it, love it, love it. The mind blowing amounts. 120,000. <laughs> You're kidding! No. The man in charge. I almost forgot that I'm at work. Is entrepreneur James Constantino. I like dealing in unusual items and interesting items, but the ones I'm most interested in are the ones that make me the most money. This time, an unusual emergency service. Tastes really good. I don't know if it's because it's um, off a fire engine. I think it adds something to it, yeah. Some desirable diamonds. Oh, wow. Well, that's a big rock, isn't it? And a guitar that could cost James dearly. It's like a boil that needs lancing, to be <laughs> honest with you. And get rid of it. Welcome to the world. How's that? Of Posh Paul. And pawnbroker James runs a very tight ship. I think he'd take around 650, 750,000. Losing money is not an option. I made a massive mistake once. He didn't talk to me for three days. He's like a bear with a sore head. I've got to go home. At the pawn shop's flagship store in Hatton Garden, who sold this? James is stock taking. James? Hi. Are you starting forming the band or something? Oh, you've seen the guitars, yeah? Oh, there's plenty of guitars. Well, I did think I wanted everyone to take up a musical instrument. I've got a Lawrence on electric triangle, <laughs> um, a Jacob's on the banjo, and we're going to hit the road. What about me? You, you can be the accordion. I'm giving it some of that, just practice, you'll be all right. <laughs> Who's the lead singer? Do you have to ask that question? Oh, got to ask, you know, we got Deborah, we got everybody here. Don't be silly, Joy. There's only one lead <laughs> singer in this town. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Every single item that comes through the door must be valued accurately. What sort of money are you looking to We're looking get? about 30,000, that's negotiable. Designer handbags are now big business for James and his team. Okay. So expert Claudia has got her work cut out with new inquiries. So definitely three LV bags. Do you have a figure in mind that you're um, sort of looking to raise? Right. All right, my love. Well, thank you, and I shall speak to you soon. Bye, darling. Oh, she sounds really lovely on the phone. Her name's Laura. She said she had uh, three Louis Vuitton bags. She's looking to raise between 5,000 and 10,000 pounds and she said half of it is to do some renovation on her house and the other half is to do some renovation on her body, <laughs> which is quite interesting, so I'd like to find out a bit more. That's it, smile. Say cheese. Our former model Laura lives alone in Manchester with her two Yorkshire Terriers, Benji and Bella. We love cheese and bacon. My dogs are Oh, my baby, he's like, literally, they get treats. They've got more toys than any kid I've ever known. Oh, he looks dead cute. Bzz, bzz. Mm. But Laura is not planning on staying single for long. There you go. The dream eventually is to have somebody to cook for, somebody to clean for, and share my life with, and to eventually become a real housewife. Ten years ago, Laura thought she had found her significant other. We were together for two years. He took me to Rome and asked me to marry him. I was absolutely over the moon. And then when we got back to England, two weeks later, I found out he was cheating on me. My whole world came crashing down on me because I thought I had this fairy tale princess life and I'd found my soulmate. Good girl. Are you gonna sit, Benji? Good boy. Now she's hoping that a complete life makeover will help her achieve her dream. So I've got the decorators in and they're doing bits and pieces, but I want the funds to literally do it all. Right now, I've got like £600 worth of wallpaper sitting underneath my stairs that I need the money to actually put on the walls. Laura had extensive plastic surgery whilst working as a model, so her body is also getting a makeover. Look, who's that? It's Mummy. 
You look incredible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so sweet. Hiya. Hello. Hi. You okay? You okay? Take a seat. Don't really model too much these days because I'm cracking on now. So I'm kind of gonna like tone down my look a lot. I would like this horrible filler dissolved underneath here. It's yeah. um, been a little bit overfilled. I'd like to have a boob reduction to not get the kind of attention that kind of a young 20 year old girl would get when you're out in a nightclub. I prefer different kind of attention these days. To raise the five to 10,000 pounds she needs to renovate herself and her house, Laura is parting with some of her favorite items. So this is my everyday Louis Vuitton bag. Um, I did kind of like a big promo job and I got a big payout from it. And I was like, Do you know what? I want to treat myself to something I wouldn't normally buy. And I wouldn't normally buy an 800 pound bag. <laughs> so my next bag is, I've had this for about eight years now. An ex-boyfriend bought it for me. Bless this little cotton sock. I'm not too attached to this. It's got memories of the ex ex-boyfriend, so I just kind of just put it in its bag, put it in the cupboard and forget about it, like I did with the ex. He's not in my cupboard. <laughs> well, not anymore. This is my favourite bag I've ever, ever been given, ever. Because it's pink and it's Louis Vuitton. It's been worldwide. She's a jet setter. She's been all over. Actually, she's from America. You had some good memories, but it's time to say au revoir. Well, obviously, I'm devastated that I have to get rid of them. And we went to high five. Yay! But the reasons that I'm changing everything, like my house and my body, is for hopefulness that I will find somebody to share everything with and have the fairy tale ending. You're going to look good for all the other dogs in the park. They're going to be so jealous of you. Weybridge, James is taking a closer look at one of the guitars from his stock take. Patrick? Yeah? And long-serving staff member Patrick has some explaining to do. What do you know about this? Hmm. Oh, the Zomatis. Yeah. Yeah, I think you remember this. Yeah, what do you know about it, though? Because we've lent three grand on it. This is quite a rare guitar, and this is very exclusive. This one. <laughs> but um, so what are we in it for three grand? Well, it owes, well, that was for the loan. Now it owes about five. Oh, okay. But we've punted it around, and the feedback we're getting is that this guitar's only worth a couple of grand. Right, okay. Turn into a free. No, it doesn't. But it's a nice guitar. But well, what's nice about it? it? Ain't nice if you're into it for five grand. Trust me. We've had this guitar come out of its contract and now we've found that we've lent on it twice as much as we should have. So we've lent £3,000 against an item that we should have only lent 1500 quid against. Patrick was the one who lent against it and it looks like he's over lent um, because there's no one out there that wants to pay that sort of money for it. Now look, what I want you to do is get yourself up to Denmark Street, punt this out and get rid of it because okay. it's a pain, it's like a boil that needs lancing to be honest <laughs> with you okay. and you're, you can right. be my surgeon. I'll be your surgeon and I'll lance it for you. And don't come back until it's gone. If you have to, do a bit of busking at Waterloo, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Anything, I mean, anything to recoup the funds. OK. All right, mate. It's absolutely ridiculous to value something at twice as much as it's worth. If everyone did that, we would be out of business within weeks. There's no doubt about it. Last year, when I had an expert look at it, they gave me a figure, but this is not worth the money that the expert said it was worth. Now I'm going to have to try and clear the mess up. This is a loss for James, and he doesn't like that. James does not like losing money. Collectibles and memorabilia expert Lawrence... Amazing. ...has had an inquiry that's got massive potential. This collection just come in three pages of it. And this, without doubt, is the best, biggest collection of autographs we've ever had at Prestige. I mean, on the first page alone, you've got Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Liberace. This is a mind-blowing collection. Very excited. Tired businessman Andrew. Thank 
comfortably. And Yoga is not as easy as it looks. Back. It's quite easy to get into position, but it's not always easy to get out of it afterwards. The bones and the joints are not as supple as they used to be. Four, five. Yoga six, is just part of Andrew's seven, retirement plan. And ten. He's also keen to turn a hobby into a business. The reason I've fallen into dog training came out of circumstance, not through planning. Up to sit. Good boy. And I happened to take two Border Collie puppies on and didn't know how to handle them. Um, and I got myself into a right to an eight. Tess, up to sit. Good girl. And then luckily I met a woman who was a, a brilliant dog handler who was just what I needed. Sam the Heldo. Good boy. And lie down. Just having a dog is not sufficient for me. It's what it's when you become the centre of the dog's world that um, is when it becomes very special. And lie down. Good girl. About seven years ago, I took a dog on called Ben, who was a border collie that didn't really have a uh, the right upbringing. But over the years, we built a lovely relationship, and he was such a kind dog, such a gentle dog. I think the best picture that captures the, uh, the bond that you can build with a dog um, was this picture, which um, is a lovely picture of Ben and I. And then about four weeks after they were taken, dear old Ben passed away, which was very sad, very sad. But uh, he was a beautiful boy. Andrew plans to set up his dog training business in Ben's memory. He's hoping that selling his autograph collection will provide him with the cash to kickstart his new venture. I started collecting the autographs around about 1979, um, when I used to work for NatWest Bank. Um, I met a guy who used to write poetry to all these famous people, and he used to get very nice letters back. And I used to meet up with him for tea most mornings, and I have to say, I was in awe of the collection. And um, in the end, he gave me the collection. Um, I gave him a nominal amount of money for it, and I just carried on writing. Oh, oh do we want one of these, look? Oh, it's look. We do for food. If they're going to offer me, you know, uh, you know, a few thousand or ten grand, it's probably not worth selling for that um, because it is personal. But if it's a, a, an offer that you know gives me enough money so that I can make a difference somewhere, high teens to twenty, I would have thought, then I will be sad to see it go. But it will, they can have it with good heart. So the question is, are they going to make me an offer that I can't refuse? Afternoon, how can I help? Pawnbroking boss James has finished stock taking, and the office is back to normal. Well, almost. Who tied in my desk? Not me this time. Can't find anything. Was it you, Joy? No, I don't tidy desk. Well, when I left here on the other day, it was it totally be? in control. Now everything's stacked up nicely, and I can't find anything. I was going to have to put a little sign up outside: "Please do not tidy." Patrick has travelled to central London with the unredeemed guitar that James once sold for £5,000. A little bit apprehensive. I don't know whether I'll, I'll get a deal done today. I will try, but I don't want to let James down. I've gone in the wrong door, haven't I? It's up here. I don't know this one. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Do you buy guitars? <laughs> Fantastic. I've come to the right place. Patrick. Andy. Nice to meet you. Right, I need to sell this. Oh, it's a 1970s Zemeyer six string made by Tony Zemeyer in Chatham, Kent. Correct. Do you see many of those? I've had, they're not common. Right. They, um, but actually his acoustic ones are more collector's value than, than oh, well, the actual tone because they sound awful. Well, yeah. Is it something you'd be interested in buying or not? It depends how much you're asking for it. Uh, well, I need five for it. No, five thousand. I wouldn't be interested you in that have. money. All right, well, look, thanks for your time. Ah, right. Not what I was expecting. 
Um, I think if we were looking to get something like this, it might be in the region of about four. Four grand, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, I might consider that. Okay, well, okay. have a think and let us know. All right, great. There we go. Wow. Quite unusual, isn't it? One of the rarest acoustics I've seen in a hell of a long time. That's awesome. Yeah, sounds nice, doesn't it? We're looking for 5,000 around that figure for it. That's what we need. I actually think it's probably worth a little more than you are asking, because yeah. this is, um, a, yeah, possibly a, a five-figure guitar, not a four-figure guitar. This is a very good guitar, but it's a very, very unique guitar, and, and with that uniqueness comes the fact that people either love it or hate it. It's not an easy sell. Well, James's next inquiry is a one-off. What an amazing thing to come in. We've just had an inquiry. Some guys have converted a fire engine into basically a pub. We've never had anything quite like it. Whoever came up with the idea initially has had a bit of a brainstorm because this potentially could earn hundreds of thousands of pounds in the right venue. And my party days are long gone, really, to be honest with you. But if this uh, fire engine served tea, I'd be right at the front. Bit of while since you played, Doug? Yeah, very long time. <laughs> More suited to crazy golf, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. The self-service fire engine bar is the brainchild of accountancy graduates Doug and Lawrence. Doug's a good friend of mine. We've uh, been drinking partners for the past six or seven years. Amongst uh, playing golf on a regular basis, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a long story the reason we got a fire engine. We're all um, studying for our county exams um, after uni and uh, one day thinking what else can we do with our lives. It's actually the self-service technology that we came across in the first place, um, rather than the actual fire engine. We wanted to implement uh, in some sort of way that we could take around in a, as a portable unit to festivals. We all love festivals. It's funny, really, we bought the fire engine and started the conversion and realised, you know, three accountants with a uh, very, very limited um, DIY experience um, was sort of to take this on. I mean, we've learned which way undoes a bolt and which, do, which way does it up. That, was, uh, that, was, that took us quite a few weeks. We were trying to remove the water pump and uh, it was a bolt. It was a sort of very, very long 24 bolt. millimetres, big bolt. So, and I think Doug spent about half an hour undoing it and then said, look, my arm's aching, can you take over? I went in, tightened it back up. <laughs> so. Whenever we take it out, people do love it. Yeah, we've done some other things. We, we were booked by Al Murray as his tour bus for his uh, political campaign, which was actually our first yeah. booking, which was, which was a lot of fun. Against then. Nigel Farage in the general election. <laughs> so we've done, done a sort of some classic car shows, some sort of big parties. But the reason we want to sell it is we haven't really had the time to dedicate to making it what it could be. You know, other sort of commitment stuff just means we can't really sort of focus on it full time. So ideally we'd like about 75,000 for it. I think that reflects the sort of time and effort that we've got put into it and its potential. No one's ever put self-service technology in a mobile bar, let alone a fire engine. And when you're on a planet of, say, more than six billion people in the world, it's quite good when you think you're the first thing, first person to ever do something like that in the world. So that's the way, that's, that's the way I look at it. It's definitely a big part of us that are sad about selling this. It's been a labour of love, um, got our hands dirty, really sort of learnt some new skills. But I'd love to see it out in more festival stuff so if someone can sort of take, come and take it and I see it next year at Glastonbury, you know, I'll go over and uh, definitely pour myself a pint. Will James think the bar is worth the £75,000 that Doug and Lawrence are looking for? Would-be housewife Laura is heading to the Manchester branch to meet designer handbag expert Claudia. Hiya. Hello there, you are right? Can I speak to Claudia, please? Got yeah, lots of, of money in there. She oh, wants well, to sure. finance a complete life makeover. Lovely to nice meet you. Thank you. Mwah. Mwah. 
The reason I'm here is yeah. because I kind of need to raise a bit of moolah for the renovation of my house. Right. And I want to do a bit of renovation on my old body as well. I'm going to <laughs> upgrade these, or should I say downgrade? <laughs> I would like to raise about five to 10,000. Right. But with the budget being over budget, I need 20. So I've got the three bags. Right. Um, I've also got an ex-boyfriend's engagement ring. Okay. I don't really want to sell this. Okay. I don't mind pawning it. All right, okay, so um, a temporary loan. And then my auntie has kindly lent me, again for a loan, um, her old engagement ring. All right. So... Oh, wow. Clean oh, up that's a nice. big block, isn't it? Again, that's just a loan. Okay. <laughs> All right. And your one, did you say you want to put that in as well? Yes. That's lovely, isn't it? Okay, we'll have these looked at. So, the three bags. Um, oh, that's lovely. Thank you. I've tried to look after them as much as possible. I'll These be the judge of that. Uh, yes. <laughs> nice little bag, isn't it? Yeah, the straps are nice on this as well. And this one you've worn mo most of all? Ooh, yes, I've got the money's worth out of that one. Do you know, these are so popular, these speedies. For the... Oh, here we are. What are you looking for? The uh, the code for it. Oh, okay. Is that, could this be a 2013? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. Mm. So if you're happy to leave everything with me, yeah. and I'll look at the bags, and I'll get one of the boys to look at the rings, then uh, we'll get back to you a bit later. Cool. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Cool. Right. Thank you for seeing me, you're and um, I'll speak to you in a bit. Hello. Shiny things. Gemologist okay. Howard yeah. has been tasked Ooh. with appraising the two diamonds. Oh, wow. This one. Oh, amazing. Got some rocks there, isn't they? They're lovely, aren't mm. they? Well, I'm going to go and look at the bags, and then when you're finished with the rings, do you want to bring them up and let me know what's Will up? Will do, yeah. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Lawrence is on his way to visit autograph expert Mark with Andrew's historic collection. With most modern signatures, you have a certificate of authenticity. With these, because of the age, you don't. So we're really going to have a look at them to see if they're real or not. I think they, they are, but however, are they secretarial? Are they the real person? That's what we're going to mark. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hello, Lawrence. I know. How I you surprise doing? you occasionally. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, this is more than one this time. I think it should really excite you, actually. Look at that. Some lovely autographs here, mate. Definitely one we've got to check up on. Old blue eyes. Yeah. Bing. Yeah. Always sign Bing, look. Yeah. Not Bing Crosby. Now. Goodness gracious. Elvis Presley's quite easily to authenticate because of the best wishes. Yeah. But he's looking for big money. OK. Um, figure in the region of 20,000. OK, £20,000, I don't know. You know what I'm going to say? Yeah. Secretarial, auto pen, especially... I mean, these people like this, they had trained people yeah. ready to sign their autograph yeah. or a machine that they simply just put yeah. the letter under. Ronald Reagan, very famous for auto pens and secretarials. Yeah. Liverarchy. So that's obviously been for a machine. Yeah. I mean, you've got to remember, these people received hundreds a day. a day. So it's really a collection that you've got to go through. So it's something I'm going to be leaving with you for a, yeah, I'd, a few days. Yeah, and I'd like to go through it. See you soon, mate. You, Look Love after you. yourself. I'll speak to you in about a week's time. You will do. As it was such a large collection, I'm not surprised that Mark has already found there could be some ones that aren't what they seem to be. 20,000 is a very big ask. We will definitely come back with a value. Whether it's what the client wants is another matter, but we'll see. High-end pawnbroker James is on his way to meet accountants Lawrence and Doug, who are hoping to sell their fire engine bar for 75,000 pounds. If it was a normal fire engine, we'd look at what other fire engines make, I'd make them a bid, put it out to people who collected that sort of stuff. But this is for someone who really wants to start their own business. Is it something that's worth £75,000 to the right people? Can someone make a living out of it? That's what I'm here to assess. Hello. 
How are you doing? Hi guys. Lawrence, nice to meet you. Lawrence, how are Doug. you? Nice to meet Doug, you. this is it, is it? This it is, is it. This pretty is amazing, nice. isn't it? Oh, thanks very much. It looks incredible. So tell me just in sort of broad terms how this works. We preload these cards with various amounts. So you just come over. They purchase ask, this. Purchase this. Then they sort of walk over to put it in. And then as you pour, it deducts money from your account. What if someone only poured a quarter of a pint? We charge you a quarter of a pint. Fantastic. So it's very accurate, and if you like, yeah, let's give Some it a cold try. Pims. Do you want one, Doug? Yep. Mmm. Tastes really good. I don't know if it's because it's um, off a fire engine, but... I think it adds something to it, yeah. It does taste much Boy, better, doesn't boring. it? <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Let's get in there and have a little look. Yeah, they've got the server that's all set up here. So effectively, this is uh, all of the self-serve system sort of links it to all the individual taps. The fire engine was loaded with gizmology and it's not my cup of tea. I'm more of a levers man than a buttons man. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about this is it encourages people to come back to your bar. If you're in an event and there's five or six different mm. bars, if you've stepped 20 quid on your card, That's you're going right. to come back to your bar because you've got the money already on the card. All I wanted to know from the fellas is, is it easy to use and could I get a pina colada out of it? Lovely. Just want to rev it up, really. I just wanted to get a sense of the manlyhood of the thing. What's that? Searchlight? Yeah. Does it that works. work? It works. I'm loving this thing. It's 8.3 litres, this thing, with a searchlight. It doesn't get any better than this. You've got to take your hats off to them. They've actually come up with an idea, had the balls to go and buy a fire engine. I mean, you've got to be a bit of a loony to go and do that. Probably why I like it. It's also got a searchlight, by the way. So guys, tell me what you're looking for, um, money-wise. So, I mean, the figure we had sort of in mind initially was 75, but we are definitely open to offers on that. Okay, I shall go back to the office, jump on the phones and see if there's anyone out there for it. Brilliant, well done. Well, look, thanks for your time today. Thanks, thanks very much for your time. Lovely, cheers. Cheers, 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 chaps, thanks. It's good to get someone to come in who's really uh, motivated and fresh and look, look at it with fresh eyes and actually be really excited at actually seeing the truck and the amount of effort has gone into it. I think to the right person, it would be a really viable business. You could have a return on it, not in years, not in months, possibly in weeks or days. Um, but then again, look, it's difficult to say because it's a buyer's market. It's a very niche market as well. There's not going to be people queuing around the block to own a fire engine that sells beer. Well, that's a beautiful colour, isn't it? Gorgeous colour. It's like a duck egg blue. Yeah. At the Manchester branch, Claudia is appraising Laura's three designer handbags. The styles of the bags are pretty desirable. It's just really down to the condition of them. I mean, the Speedy's had its day. I mean, inside and out, it's pretty tatty. And the handles and the interior, and even the hardware's all sort of discoloured. So Laura's definitely, you know, uh, had her money's worth. So really, out of the three, I would say the Rivington would be the best one to buy in, in order to resell, because it's not as worn. It's still in pretty good condition. Uh, on the Brea, uh, the Vernis bag, um, I mean, you know, they retail at like £2,600, um, around about that sort of figure. And, they, you know, there's, there's pen marks on the actual leather, um, which is visible from the outside. Interior-wise, it's got champagne stains, we've got biro stains, we've got probably makeup, eyeliner, all sorts of, I don't know, discoloured, probably sweets. In this case, Laura hasn't done a great job in looking after her bags. Don't put pens in your bags. With Laura's bags not worth anywhere near the £20,000 she wants for her makeover, everything is riding on her rings. Gemologist Howard is assessing them. 
Diamonds um, are something special, as, as the cliche states, you know, a diamond is forever, like love, so they say. First is Laura's old engagement ring. It's absolutely amazing, this diamond. It's um, a lovely big stone. It's really nicely set. Um, it's raised, so it shows off the diamond to its best features. We sell more round diamonds than we do all the other shapes put together. By far the most popular in the world, really. Her auntie's ring is next. On the whole, this is a, a beautiful example of a diamond ring. Um, big, bright, reflecting the light well. The only uh, setback is it is drawing a little bit of body colour. You get slight hues of yellow. Uh, due to the presence of nitrogen in diamonds, which will just balance the, the value down a bit. Um, on the whole, it's, it's looking a great piece. Hello. Hi, Danny, you all right? Yeah, good. How you doing? All good, yeah, it's fine, lovely. Patrick is back from his guitar selling trip and has news for boss James. Hi, James. How are you doing, Patrick? Yeah, good. Um, basically, I've got two provisional bids. You needed five for it. I've had a, a, bit, a bids around about four, four and a half. That's a bit historic, mate. That's already gone. That's uh... joking. No, I've put that to auction, mate. That's a bit you're a bit, a bit late. <laughs> no, really? Why? Well, because I couldn't wait any longer. I decided to put the guitar into auction. I just wasn't convinced that Patrick was going to find a buyer. You promised me you would bring Bing back a handful of cash. Cash. Yeah, no, I said that. I said I'd get you more than 1,500 quid, which I did. We didn't get me well, anything. Well, I got you two bids. And unfortunately, that is the nature of the beast. That's what James is like. He wants his money. He wants it now. You let me down. You failed, basically. <laughs> There's two firm bids on there over in excess of four grand. When you go to auction with an item, you never know on the day, who's there and what you're going to achieve. Personally, I would have waited, gone up to Denmark Street, got my money and known where I stood. What have you got? What have I got? I've got nothing in the minute. All I've got is uh, an auction promise, so let's see what happens. OK. Putting the guitar up for auction is a gamble. I'm not sure at this stage if it's going to pay off. It's a risk. It's a big risk. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, and 700. After an extensive investigation, Lawrence is finally ready to give dog trainer Andrew a price for his autograph collection. It's taken quite a while to work it all out um, because he wanted £20,000, a lot of money. Um, we've come up with an offer, which I'm hoping he'll be happy with. Hello, Andrew, how are you? Hello, Lawrence, how are you doing? Good to see you. Let's go upstairs. I'm not going to give it away because they, they mean, a lot of those names, they mean too much and, and it's, a, it's a very impressive collection. Right, well, I've got some very interesting findings. So rather than go through the whole collection, Steve McQueen, I really like it. It's not right. It's not right, as in? And it's um, auto pen. Right. Um, you know, it's not and fake. And auto pen it's, means what? It's a machine, it's a machine that does it. Right. Um, James Cagney is mm. um, oh, auto really? pen. Evil Knievel, Julie Andrews, Bob Dylan. Uh, no, so, really? quite a lot of the collection. Your Senate ones on the Senate letters are definitely secretarial. Oh, so really? So, quite a big value goes out of the collection. Yeah. You've got to imagine, you see yeah. these people... They're busy guys, yeah. It, it, I once seen something about Muhammad Ali and they said, you know, if he'd actually signed everything that he's meant to have signed... He wouldn't have boxed. He wouldn't have boxed. <laughs> he wouldn't have done anything. He wouldn't have had dinner or breakfast. Yeah. He would have just been yeah, signing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, it's not all bad news. The Elvis is right. It is? It is definitely right. There's no doubt that is a genuine okay. signature. Oh, good. So, um, contact James has come forward mm. and he's put in an offer for you. Oh, right. Okay. For the complete collection, as it is, yep. so he, he knows our findings. Yeah, yeah. And he's willing to make an offer of uh, five grand. Mm. Which I think is actually a very, very fair offer. When do I need to make a decision? Can I You're sleep on client. it? You're the client. Please sleep on it. OK. Well, have a think Lawrence, about it. Great. I'll Thank keep you very much indeed. Thanks for Lovely. coming Lawrence, Andrew. good to see you again. You're a nice man. Thank you. I wish it had all been right, because that would have been absolutely amazing. And I hope he does go for it, because he wants to use the money for a very nice cause. And he's a really nice man, so let's hope so. 
I've just got to think for the next two or three days as to whether it's really worth me selling at that lower figure. It doesn't seem a lot for the big names that are in it. Hi, how are you? Hi there. I have some jewellery to sell. Okay. Finding a buyer willing to pay £75,000 for the fire engine bar Come on. is proving difficult for James. I'm going to hold my lucky hand while I'm doing it. This is the hand that helps me do things. It's not good. Hello, mate. Give me a call. Got a really lovely fire engine. I've only actually got this one guy who's shown any interest in it, which isn't a good position to be in. Um, now he's not picking up his phone. Uh, he's probably changed his name. Uh, got a stick on beard and has moved to Peru. No, my luck. Um, let's just hope he rings back. shop's headquarters in Hatton Garden, James is waiting for a very important call. Patrick's uh, in Bath today at um, an auction house. We've got a guitar running through there, which he lent money on, and it would seem that he lent too much. Obviously, I've taken it around. I've had experts look at it. I did get some bids. And I've had valuations anywhere between four and 10,000 for it. But, you know, what can you do? He wanted to put it in auction, it's in auction. I'm actually getting a little bit of a sweat on. I know it sounds ridiculous and it's a guitar, but I've, the auction routine is quite a nerve-wracking exper experience, especially when you're there in the flesh and watching it go through. I know I'm not there, but I feel like I'm there because Patrick's there. Hopefully it's going to do its best. Give it a little kiss. Sound baby slow. I'm a bit nervous about it really, but... 17.50? I think I still believe we've over -lent, but let's see what happens. I was having a good day until just now, and I was just spotted in the catalogue, and guess what lot number I am? 13. How unlucky is that? Uh, the auctioneer said he's never sold a lot 13 ever in his life. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm really that superstitious, but you need every bit of help you can get these days. That's Patrick now. Patrick? Hi, James. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, mate, not bad. Lot 13 is the 1978 Anthony Zanatis custom round acoustic guitar there. That's um, coming up now, James. Ooh. Um, fantastic guitar this, and I can start away on commission at £2,000. Do I see 2100 At 2100 I'm out. Do I see 2200 At £2,100, do I see 2200 elsewhere? 2200 2300 2400 2500 2600 2700 2800 2900 here we go 3000 3200 3000 pounds 3200 for one more come on 3000 i will sell then in the room at 3000 pounds you're 3000 pounds sir and your number you get that yeah I'm just riding up your P45. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm on my way back then. All right, mate. With some money. All right, well, good effort. Cheers, mate. Bye. His decision to put it into auction is his loss, unfortunately. I don't like seeing James lose money, but it's, it is what is on the day. We've got 3,000. It's not, it's not the best result, but it's not a bad result, I would say. Oh, well. Knowing my luck, he come back with another couple of guitars <laughs> that he's bought. <laughs> and a banjo. After a disappointing bid for his autograph collection, dog lover Andrew has made a decision on Lawrence's offer. Test side. <laughs> Lawrence um, made me an offer of 5,000 um, and I have now decided to accept it. Um, partly because of the fact that uh, quite a few of the bigger names uh, are actually auto pen and not the real people themselves. So it's, it's made, given me a slightly less uh, empathetic connection with the collection and that 5,000 pounds will come in handy um, to help set up my dog training, dog behavior business up in Northumberland. Even if it's not the 20,000 that I was originally after. 
Good morning, sir. But after I gave him all the facts and figures, maybe a bit of a reality check, he went away, thought about it, came back to me, took the money, everyone's happy. Accountancy graduates Lawrence and Doug have come to Hatton Garden to see if James has found them a buyer for their fire engine bar. Slightly anxious, but I just want to get the deal done. Just want to, um, yeah, it's like to get a decent price and just, you know, move on. Hi, uh, we've uh, got a meeting with James. Best case scenario, yeah, we, we walk in, he's got the cash pile on the table, we put it in the suitcase and we walk out. <laughs> I think realistically, obviously, it's going to take a little bit more than that. Lovely. Hi, guys. Hey, James. You all right? Doing? Great, yeah, come in. Hi, James, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good nice to see, to see you. You all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Well, look, it was an amazing thing to be presented from our point of view, and I was really blown away by the, um, the way that you guys have thought about everything and put it together. What are you actually looking for in terms of the numbers again? Run that by me. The sort of ideal figure we sort of had in our head um, was about sort of around 75,000 mark. Um, but as we sort of discussed on the day, that is something that we uh, appreciate, you know, that we, we are sort of willing to take offers in, uh, on that. I did feel that 75,000 was a bit ambitious. In respect to finding a buyer for it, I found out pretty quickly it wasn't ever going to be easy, to be honest with you. And as you can appreciate, there's probably not many people on the planet that have got 75 grand to spend on a fire engine bar. I started to get a little bit of interest from one individual who started to screw down um, in the numbers a little bit more with me. And he has presented me with a number. And it's 50,000 pounds. How do you feel about that? Fantastic. Yeah, we're very I think a little bit shell-shocked, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... Well, I was uh, shell-shocked when he came come back with the offer, to be quite honest with you. So uh, I think he can see the potential in it. He hasn't got time to build one from scratch. I think that's where the value is. We were expecting sub-40, so yeah. to get above that as an offer... We and consider it would be above that, you know. Um, well, look, fantastic. I'm really glad that I could help. Fantastic. Oh, she'll be in touch. Perfect. Cheers. See you, James. Lovely, James. Lovely to see you. Cheers. To see you Cheers. That's uh, great news. Yeah, very happy with that. Fantastic for us. That's uh, a nice holiday or uh, put your savings. <laughs> night out. <laughs> well, one night out, yeah. Now that I've done the fire engine bar, if there's anyone out there with a ambulance burger van that they want moving on, maybe that'll be the next thing to do. Perhaps. Wannabe housewife Laura has arrived at the Manchester branch. Hello right. again, Laura. You're right. Claudia is expecting you upstairs, so yeah. we're joined to come through again. Sure, thank you. To give her home and herself a complete makeover, she wants a £20,000 loan for her bags and her rings. Fingers, legs, everything crossed that it's going to be a good result and I get the money that I need to uh, refurb everything. Hello. Hi! I'm back! <laughs> you alright? I'm good, how are you? Are you good? Mwah! <laughs> okay, you're putting oh, it yeah. down! <laughs> right, is it good news or good news? Well, there's lots of news. <laughs> okay. Um, the bags. What do you think? What Have you got an idea of how much you oh, kind of I had don't... in mind to, to get for the bags? Um, I don't know. I mean, what I want and what I think. About three, four? Hundred. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because of the desirability of them, um, also the condition of them, all together, I will be able to offer you a bit more than that. Okay. Um, so I think it's down to the rings, really. Okay. So, oh. do you have any idea what these are, are worth at all? My auntie said her engagement ring would be worth like over a grand. Right. I have no idea what mine would be worth, like, or if it's real or what the crack is with that. Okay. Um, with this one here, although you've got um, a bigger stone, which is, I think it's around four carats, there is a slightly yellow tinge to it. Um, with your engagement ring, it's really clear and it's very white. The colour of it is really, really good. And that's a three, just over three carats. Um, so just as a loan, uh -huh. we can offer you a hundred thousand pounds on both of them. What? Come again? 
Yeah. Hundred thousand pound? Are you crazy? Well, that we can loan forty-five thousand against it, and this one here we how can loan fifty-five thousand against it because it is slightly bigger. So how much is my worth? Um. Well, we tend to loan against around the 70, 60 to 70 percent of the second-hand value. Oh, I might go back and marry him now. <laughs> So, do you want to have a think about it, or do you want? Do you know what you're going to do? I'm going to give my um, auntie her ring back. So you're all loan against it. your one. That's good, yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. At least it means that you can keep all your other bits. Everything. <laughs> I'm taking them all. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll wrap everything up for you, and um, see you a bit later, and we'll uh, do all the paperwork. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you very much. It's lovely of you to come in. Thank you. You're welcome. Take Fantastic care. meeting you. And Ciao. you. Bye. <laughs> Laura's face was just, it was just brilliant. Magical. This is what we want. This is what we want. People coming in and being, you know, really like pleasantly surprised and uh, yeah, and just being able to help out. I knew he loved me, but not that much. But anyway, I'm just so happy. And I don't have to sell my bags. Woo! I can still look bougie as hell. So I'm glad. Next time on Posh Porn. It wasn't for thrusting, it was more perhaps for heading. How much do you want to see it? This much? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa!